Hello everyone, and welcome to my dance sports course here in full year 2020 and in school. For the full year of 2020, our total revenue increased by 17.7% year over year to 114.8 billion NMB. Adjusted EBITDA and adjusted net profit for 4.7 billion NMB and 3.1 billion NMB respectively in 2020. At the end of the year, annual transacting users on our platform increased to 510.6 million, while the number of annual active merchants increased to 6.8 million. The average number of transactions per transacting user increased to 28.1 times in 2020, from 27.49 times in 2019, despite the impact from COVID-19. Looking back on 2020, our most important tasks were helping the broader society to fight COVID-19, meeting the daily needs of consumers and help the business recovery of merchants in this very tough period. Even during the most uncertain times, we never stopped providing essential services to the greater consumer community. To ensure that our services maintain the strict safety standards, we not only rolled out a contact list delivery immediately at the, at the onset of the pandemic, but also launched various stay safe, uh, safe stay and safe dining programs to help the industry recover. We provided our merchants with substantial financial and traffic support, enabling them to resume their and improve their operation efficiency while also working with the local governments to distribute the vouchers to stimulate consumption recovery. Meanwhile, we remained committed to accelerating the digitization of the broader industry over the long term, increasing our investment in new opportunities and building new foundations for our long term growth. During the most intense periods of the pandemic, food delivery was the many people's primary source of food and became an increasingly essential service throughout 2020. The three pillars of our food delivery business, namely our consumer base, merchant base, and delivery network, remained strong and continue to generate powerful network effects. Our solid fitness performance in 2020 was a testament to our resilience in this model and unparalleled execution capabilities. Both demand and supply sites continue to evolve into their next phase of growth. The monthly transaction users and their monthly average transactions frequency also reached the new highs in Q4, with the latter firmly above six times per month. <coughs> Our consumer base and transaction frequency growth not only reflects consumers' increasing preference for delivery and more consumption scenarios, but also allows consumers' ongoing trust in and recognition of our food delivery services. On the merchant side, the number of annual active merchants reached 3.5 million in Q4, which represented a new quarterly record. In 2020, COVID-19 actually accelerated business digitization for more merchants and made the online operation improvement more important for most of the merchants. Consequently, in 2020, the overall quality of restaurants improved <coughs> with the number of high-quality restaurants on our platform growing significantly. We believe that the acceleration of the merchant digitization and the improvements of the merchant operations are critically important to us as we strive to dedicate to consumers ever increasing demand and diversify the consumption needs. <coughs> In terms of our delivery network, we face an unexpected and challenging situation from the outset of the pandemic. Nevertheless, we remain committed to providing uh, delivery riders, consumers, or merchants with the appropriate solutions. During the pandemic, 
for example, we typically organize the various teams to ensure that our delivery network maintains a sufficient uh, capacity. Meanwhile, we rolled out our pioneered contact list delivery method and organized the nuclear testing for our delivery riders to provide our riders and consumers with the better protection. These measures reflect our quick emergency response capabilities, as well as the ability of our delivery network to handle unexpected situations. On a related note, we were pleased to see that the importance of our delivery riders continues to receive a widespread recognition as one of our delivery riders were featured on the cover of the Time magazine in early 2010. Such coverage not only shows the importance of our delivery riders to society, but also their fundamental role in our daily lives. By the end of 2010, a total of 9.5 million delivery riders had earned the income on the main time platform. Among them, around 2.3 million of our delivery riders came from um, impoverished counties and had therefore effectively lived out of poverty through their work with the Maytan. <coughs> the importance of the Ruby Riders Group as our business partners cannot be stressed enough. 2020 marked the seventh anniversary of our Maytan food delivery business. And in Q4, we took this opportunity to organize numerous discussion panels with our delivery riders to listen to their feedback and better understanding their needs and challenges. We also launched the Hongzhou project, the same boat project, which is a project focused on delivery riders that aim to improve their job security, work experiences, career path, and social well-being. As we advance into 2021, we will continue to develop this project as our delivery riders' work and personal well-being remains a priority for us. By continuously upgrading our support and services for delivery riders, we will work towards ensuring that they are satisfied with their job and work experiences. We believe that this approach will ultimately allow us to work together more seamlessly and thus create a virtual cycle for meeting the demands uh, of both consumers and merchants alike. The transport delivery ecosystem consists of many important players, including consumers, merchants, delivery riders, and business partners. Going forward, we will continue to promote a cohesive environment for all industry participants as well as healthy industry growth. Our in-store hotel and travel was the most impacted segment in 2020. For our in-store dining business, we further optimized our merchant base, tailored our products and organized theme-based consumption festivals around holiday seasons. For other in-store services, we effectively managed the multiple service categories and improved our multi-dimensional operational capability in 2020 by identifying the changes in consumer habits and future consumption trends. As a result, the year-over-year -year growth rate of all the volumes, GTV, and commission revenue from our in-store businesses reached the quarterly record highs for the past two years. In 2021, we hope to continue leading the industry to its next phase of recovery and growth. We plan to continue capturing consumer habit changes, capitalizing on new consumption trends, further penetrating into more lower tier cities, and upgrading our multi-category in-store service capabilities through product innovation. In 2020, Due to the impact from Kobe, domestic room nights for our hotel booking business declined year over year. Nonetheless, we took this opportunity to further solidify our leadership position. During the year, 
The pent up demand for long distance domestic and overseas travel continue to spill over into domestic travel and weekend trip uh, activity. We effectively brought more offline users onto our platform and channeled them into online hotel booking during the quarter. Meanwhile, our platform's high star hotel supply and booking both expanded, with the high star hotel accounting for an increasing share of our total hotel supply and our number of high star hotel room nights accounting for more than 15% of our total room nights in Q4. Our expansion of five-star hotels was particularly successful as we became an increasing attractive channel for these hotels to grow their customer base and sales. One key initiative on this front has been the establishment of a customer service team solely dedicated to our five-star hotel customers. In the future, we plan to continue increasing our hotel coverage and improving the quality of our supply and services in order to provide the consumers with a broader selection. Now, moving on to uh, new initiatives, the third segment. Notably, during the pandemic, consumers choose to buy a wider range of goods and services online, which further accelerated the digitization of the broader local retail industry. In 2020, retail was considered to have strategic importance to us and will be the key investment area. We actively allocated resources to low out made plan select in Q4 and quickly expanded this community e-commerce business in 2,000 uh, cities and counties during the quarter. As a result, May plan select now covers more than 90% of the cities and counties in China. While this business is still at a very early stage, we believe it can create a tremendous value for consumers and upstream suppliers, including farmers. And we are very committed to continue investing in scaling up our community e-commerce business. Through our efforts to build out our supply chain and the next day delivery capability, this business model provides broader SKU selections with a much more convenient uh, shopping experience and lower price. They in turn allow us to acquire a vast new user base in less accessible and rural areas. During the quarter, through the cooperation with the, uh, some local governments, we launched the uh, agricultural produce direct shop uh, sourcing, Nongxian Zhichai that program in some pilot areas, such as Yunnan, Jining, and Guangxi province, to reduce in intermediary costs, improve our supply chain efficiency, accelerate the cold chain infrastructure development, help farmers generate additional revenues, and lower prices for consumers. Going forward, we will continue to ramp up these efforts. This will help us to uh, increase our product selection as well as to connect consumers with uh, farmers to better access a wider range of high value for money products. Meanwhile, we also made upfront uh, planning investment in logistic infrastructure, including uh, warehousing and procurement during the quarter to ensure that we can handle large volumes of agricultural products smoothly and deliver them in timely, in optimal condition, even to lower tier markets. By building and innovating our platform to provide a wider range of services and goods, we want to adapt to the evolving consumer needs in different parts of our country, while continuing to expand both our operational and geographical boundaries. In this venture, our commitment to the digital development and betterment of the rural area will matter. We very much view this as our value and responsibility to help further build up the next generation infrastructure in less developed areas and make the e-commerce experience better for all. In 2020, Meituan Instant Shopping 
uh, also achieve the stellar growth as we continue to broaden and diversify merchant base without its marketplace capabilities and convert to more food delivery consumers into non-food uh, category consumers. Moreover, we tailored our operational strategies for different products and verticals, which proved to be quite effective in growing this business. In Q4, Meituan Instant Shopping daily take orders reached around 4.5 million. For our self-operated Meituan Grocery, we remain focused on tier one cities. Uh, that's uh, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen, the four cities. Meituan Grocery is targeted at those consumers in these four cities who focus more on convenience and higher qualities. Going forward, in order to improve uh, Meituan Grocery's overall business efficiency and consumer experience, we aim to strengthen our procurement capabilities, optimize our supply chain, increase our uh, warehouse density in these four cities. Overall, our primary business continues to post solid results in this challenging year. Many of our primary services demonstrated their unique values and have increasing become, increasingly become the new infrastructure for people's daily life. We also have identified and invested in attractive new business opportunities, such as uh, community e-commerce, that's uh, Meitan Select, which we believe will change more people's lives for better. When analyzing new initiatives, we always take a long-term perspective. We remain committed to making investment in big opportunities that are capable of delivering long-term growth and providing all participants with more value, even though this approach will lead to a significant and negative impact on our financial results in the short term. As we look back at 2020, our country has successfully mitigated the residual impact of the pandemic, achieved the formidable economic growth, and cultivated a conducive environment for both individual and corporate development. We are a beneficiary of such developments and are therefore thankful for all the positive changes that we have experienced over the past year. A corporate social responsibility continues to be our top priority. And we are committed to building a better community and creating more values for society. As an e-commerce platform with a vast um, consumer base, we continue to provide the better services to our consumers and help small local businesses to digitally transform their operation over the long term. In 2020, we committed to create um, more job opportunities and to help, uh, deliver, help delivery riders grow professionally and personally contributing to the overall national efforts on the less well-off communities. We also allocate resources to the digital development of rural areas, especially to solve their pain points around agricultural produce distribution and overall purchases. They plan to that will upgrade consumption experience for the rural community and gradually close out the urban-rural consumption gap. As we build out the necessary logistical infrastructure in lower tier markets and provide these consumers with a wider range of quality goods more conveniently with value for money. We will, we will continue to focus on uh, ESG and proactively execute the carbon neutra neutrality initiative. Not only do we innovate to promote the sustainable packaging, we also advocate the holistic management of our bikes to provide a more environmentally friendly uh, transport solution. We will also commit to uh, investing in future technology and driving innovation on every front to ensure our continued progress and the creation of uh, more unique societal values. Uh, lastly, we will abide by the proper regulatory guidelines and work with the relevant authorities to promote the healthy long-term growth 
of the Internet and platform economies by always uh, fulfilling our mission to help people eat better and live better. Uh, with that, I will turn the call over to Xiao Hui for an update on our uh, latest financial results. Thank you, Xing. Hello, everyone. I will now go through our fourth quarter financial results. In the fourth quarter, total revenue reached RMB 37.9 billion, up by 34.7% year over year, driven by the solid revenue growth of our food delivery business. Steady recovery of of our in-store hotel and travel business, and the robust revenue growth of our new initiative. Cost of revenue as a percentage of total revenue increased to 35.1% from 65.5% in the previous year period and 69.4% in the third quarter, mainly due to our increased investment in new initiatives and especially due to the rapid expansion of our retail business which are still at an early stage. Meanwhile, selling and marketing expenses as a percentage of the revenue increased to 20.2% from 19% in the prior year period and 16.5% in the third quarter. This increase was primarily due to the higher spending for transacting user incentives, online and offline promotional activities and advertisements. R&D expenses as a percentage of total revenue was 8.6% increasing from 8% in the prior year period and 8.4% in the third quarter. This increase was mainly driven by the increase in our R&D headcount, which resulted from the expansion of new business, higher average salary, and the share-based compensation. GNA expenses as a percentage of total revenue were 5.1% in this quarter, which represented a year-over-year -year increase of 0.7 percentage points and a quarter-of-quarter -quarter increase of 1.1 percentage points, respectively. The increase was due to increased employee benefit expenses, recruitment expenses, and other profession fees, which was in line with our business expansion. Our food delivery and in-stock hotel and travel segment continue to demonstrate healthy growth and positive financial results. The two segments combined achieved an aggregate of any profit of RMB 3.7 billion, increasing from RMB 2.8 billion in the uh, corresponding period of 2019 and RMB 3.6 billion last quarter. However, we recorded a total operating loss of RMB 2.9 billion this quarter due to our significant increase in new business especially for our retail and ride-sharing business, and also due to our increased R&D spending for advanced technologies. On a consolidated basis, adjusted EBITDA and adjusted net profit also tend to negative R&D 589 million and R&D 1.4 billion, respectively. Now, moving to our segment reporting, starting with the delivery. At year end, our annual transaction users increased to 388 million, with healthy order growth in both lower tier city and high tier cities. During this quarter, we continue to implement an effective food delivery mentorship program, refine our consumer marketing efficiency, and augment the variety and quality of our food delivery supply. Such efforts help to grow our monthly transaction users and bring their monthly average transaction frequency to the new high. Our membership program continues to wrap up the transaction frequency of our high potential consumers, while our monthly average membership subscribers more than doubled year over year. As a result, our growth rate for the number of food delivery transactions continues to surge on a year over year basis, with the average number of daily food delivery transactions increasing by 33% year over year to 36.2 million transactions in the period. Consumption scenario including breakfast, afternoon tea, and nighttime snacks continue to grow at faster pace than lunch and dinner scenarios in Q4. Orders from more than three kilometers away also accounted for an even larger share of total delivery orders at around 20%. Meanwhile, tempered orders with lower ticket sizes fully resumed during the quarter, which led to a further decline in our average value order on a sequential basis. 
Nevertheless, our average value to order continues to grow on a year-over-year basis. Also, delivery GTV growth accelerated to 39.4% year-over-year, demonstrating the strong recovery of our food delivery business. Meanwhile, we continue to see an increasing willingness by food delivery merchants to acquire online traffic this quarter. Notably, our efforts to further refine our package online marketing solutions continue to accelerate food delivery segment adoption of our online marketing services, with our advertising merchant base growing by 50% year year. Our monetization rate decreased by 0.2 percentage points year over year to 13.8% in the period, which was mainly due to our increased spending on user incentives especially during our membership program to accelerate our order volume growth. As a result, our food delivery revenue growth accelerated to 37% year over year in the fourth quarter. Going forward, we remain committed to upgrading our product experience and diversifying our consumption scenarios and supplies in order to bring our food delivery frequency to the next level. Our confidence on the long-term food delivery volume remains unchanged. In terms of cost, the gain from our efforts to improve our delivery network efficiency and optimize, optimize our delivery network operations were once again essentially offset by the impact of VAT exemption granted to our delivery partners, which can continue to pressure our delivery cost order in this quarter. As such, our delivery cost order continues to increase on both year over year and quarter over quarter basis. Similarly, Similar to the previous quarter, the sequential increase was due to seasonality as well as the temporary incentives which we pay out to deliver riders or working under extreme weather conditions. However, our increasing business scale and higher average value to order allow us to improve our food delivery business operating profit and operating profit margin on a year-over-year basis to R&D 882.4 million and 4.1% respectively. The sequential improvement in operating margin was mainly due to our improved monetization rate as a result of the change in our order mix. Our confidence on the long-term margin of food delivery remains unchanged. Now, turning to our second segment, let's talk hotel and travel, in which the segment's year-over-year revenue growth rate improved to positive 12.2% during this quarter. Our in-stock business also continues to gradually wrap up despite COVID-19 in Dalian, Beijing, and other cities in the fourth quarter. We continue to observe a strong demand for online consumption in such industries as leisure and entertainment, beauty and the medical aesthetics, and more. Our medical aesthetics sales grew by more than 70% year-over-year in Q4 as we further standardize product offerings and or sense reviews on our platform, boosting consumption confidence in our services. Some new categories have proven to be quite popular, such as auto-related services and escape rooms, both of which achieved relatively high year-over-year -year growth in the quarter and outpaced their pandemic growth. For instance, we also introduced more options for quality light meal restaurants to our platform, for top national and local train restaurants, which are strategically important, we have designed innovative transaction-based products and supported their unique advertising needs. In 2020, the number of these types of restaurants significantly increased through our ecosystem, with their sales also growing considerably as a result of our tailored services. By optimizing the operation system, we further leverage the merchant base of our food delivery business to expand our in-stock dining merchant base. As a result, more high potential restaurants have adopted our in-stock marketing products and our platform capture more cross-selling opportunities. The various holiday, holiday promotional campaigns further stimulate consumers' in-stock consumption. During the Christmas and New Year holidays in Q4, Dining out became significantly more common, with number of transactions reaching new heights and increasing more than 65% year over year during the holiday period. Our refined merchant operations also continue to promote the ongoing extension of our local service merchant base, with the number of our quarterly local service merchants 
increasing about 16% year to year. As a result, in South segment, commission revenue continued to rack up during the quarter, up by 11.8% year to year. For online marketing services, we continue to see a steady recovery trend in merchant in merchant spending levels on, for online marketing activities, especially during the holiday season. Notably, merchant adoption rates for CPC advertising products and subscription-based services, which yield higher user transaction conversion, continue to increase on a sequential basis. The gradual Resumption in marketing demand from local merchants helped the segment online marketing revenue to achieve 13% year to year growth. With respect to our hotel business, despite the COVID 19 in several cities entering the recovery of consumption, consumer demand for hotel booking services in most other cities continues to be unleashed during this quarter. More importantly, demand for local accommodation and intercity travel both maintain their steady growth momentum. Meanwhile, our efforts to acquire more offline consumers and strengthen our collaborations with more high-star hotels, particularly five-star hotels, help us to further solidify our leading position in hotel booking business. As a result, the domestic room night consumed on our platform increased by 8.8% year over year in the fourth quarter, with year by year revenue growth also tending to positive. More notably, among total domestic room nights consumed on our platform in this quarter, the number of room nights from five star hotels increased by more than 110% year over year. Operating profit for our export hotel and travel business was R&D 2.8 billion, remaining stable on quarter over quarter basis and increasing by 21% from the same period of last year. Operating margin increased by 2.8 percentage points year over year to 39.5%, mainly due to the improved marketing and online traffic acquisition efficiency, and partially offset by the increased offline promotion expenses. The sequential decline in segment of credit margin was primarily due to the increased spending on promotion and advertising, partially offset by the improved operating efficiency. Now, let's turn to our third segment, new initiatives and others. During this period, revenue in this segment increased to RMB 9.2 billion, representing an increase of 51.9% year over year. Such growth was mainly due to the increase in revenue from our retail business, B2B distribution services and the ride sharing services, as we further accelerating our business extension efforts to better satisfy consumers' growing needs. As Xing mentioned, we have been very focused in development on main plan select uh, as, as one of the, our retail business. At the same time, for main plan instant shopping, we have been uh, working focused on high potential verticals, bringing more quality suppliers and merchants online. For electronic products, we work with Apple and Huawei franchises to deliver their new flagship products to individuals in the round 30 minutes. Meanwhile, the vertical for main supermarkets and convenience stores grew by more than 80% year over year. Online delivery services for medicine reach a daily peak order volume of 500,000 in Q4, and the flower orders also grew by more than 160% year over year in Q4. For May Chuan Grocery in Q4, we increased the number of warehouses to over 300, continuing to strengthen our competitive advantage in these four key cities. Operating loss for our new initiatives and other segments increased significantly on both a year of year and a quarter of a quarter basis to negative R&D 6 billion in this quarter. Our retail business, especially our community e-commerce business, was our largest investment area. It was noting that while our community e-commerce business is still in its early stage of development and is expanding rapidly, it has not yet achieved its normal of scale. In addition, while we continue to make substantial upgrade planning and investment in warehousing and fulfillment infrastructure during this quarter, we also continue to cultivate consumer habits and expand our group leader base through incentives. 
This investment led to a noticeable increase in losses for our community commerce business during this quarter. For our ride-sharing business, the average turnover rate for bikes and electronic mopeds were lower as a result of seasonality, while depreciation expenses increased significantly due to the launch of new bikes and electronic mopeds. This led to a significant increase in operating losses for our ride-sharing business on both a year-over-year -year and quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis. In addition, we also increased our R&D spending for advanced technology such as autonomous vehicles, drones, and more, which caused our operating loss to expand on a year-over-year -year basis. However, we take the long-term perspective with investing in new initiatives, and we are always patient to allow our business to grow and bear fruit. Now, coming to our cash position, as of December 31st, 2020, our cash cash equivalent and short-term investment total RMB 61.1 billion, and our operating cash flow increased to RMB 8.5 billion in 2020 from RMB 5.6 billion in 2019. In conclusion, both our food delivery and extra hotel and travel segment continue to deliver solid results in this quarter. As China's economy continues to recover, we remain focused on adapting our services to ensure that consumers' needs were met and merchants were able to further digitize and optimize their operations through the services and solutions that we offer. We maintain our belief that our primary business has a significant runway for future growth and operation optimization over the long run. While our significant investment in this new initiative will continue to hamper our overall profitability in the near term, these new initiatives are also creating increasing value for consumers, merchants, our business partners, and the broader society. We remain committed to making investment in big opportunities that are capable of delivering long-term growth as well as providing consumers and all participants with more value. We believe that community e-commerce is one of these big opportunities and we will allocate sufficient resources to accelerate its development in 2021 while continuously improving its operating efficiency. Our decision to increase investment in new initiatives may continue to cause significant negative impacts on our overall financial results and we may continue to record operating losses in the next few quarters as we ramp up our community e-commerce business. Nevertheless, this will remain consistent with our investment philosophy of prioritizing long-term value or short-term gain. With that, we are now open for Q&A. Thank you. If you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. To withdraw your question, press the pound or hash key. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. Your first question comes from the line of Eddie Lung of Bank of America, Mary Lynch. Please ask your question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Um, just uh, two uh, questions. Uh, the first one is about the losses. Uh, and the investment in uh, new initiatives. Uh, just uh, would you provide a bit more color on the uh, spending? Uh, any um, breakdown or uh, the upcoming outlook? Uh, and then secondly, um, we, we also understand uh, that um, in the new initiatives um, and other pieces, you guys have to work with a lot of uh, uh, small and medium-sized uh, enterprises and uh, merchants. Uh, so just uh, wondering if you could also um, you know, talk a little bit uh, on the regulation risk uh, on, uh, on uh, working with SMEs and uh, any uh, risk uh, to the business model, such as like commission rates, etc. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Eddie. <coughs> so to answer your uh, first question, uh, in, in Q4 uh, operating loss for our new initiative, was about uh, six billion, and half of which half of which come from uh, new transit act. And other new initiatives such as ride sharing, maintenance grocery, and quite a bit the B2B food distribution uh, also expanded the operating losses. And as you mentioned, uh, maintenance act is still um, 
Well, it is still at a very early stage, and we are expanding uh, the business very quickly. And it will take um, take up front investments. And operating losses from this business also further increase as a result of rapid growth because we uh, scale our business nationwide in a very short time. But, uh, but I'm quite um, uh, happy about the uh, fast uh, expansion of our business in Q4. So retail business is um, a testament to our mission to help people eat better, live better. And we all know it's a huge business with a uh, very, very big uh, adjustable market and huge potential to further digitize and build the whole uh, value chain. And I think there's no single format of retailing that will suit uh, all consumers' all needs. So we will continue to explore uh, multiple formats in retailing. And so different business model for uh, different uh, demographic and also maybe for different cities. Uh, different tier, uh, tier of cities because people just have different um, needs. So we expect to uh, continue investing in all three um, formats for our uh, retailing business as a uh, nearby select for lower tier cities and and that's the, the top, of our, top of our priority. And at the same time, we are also uh, building our Meitan grocery and that's the uh, on-demand grocery as we self-operated. Currently, it also incurs a uh, larger operating uh, loss. Uh, we are uh, limiting the Meitan grocery to uh, four tier one cities at the moment. And the third one is Meitan in the shopping. Um, um, because we have the largest on-demand delivery network, uh, we can deliver food very uh, very quickly in around 30 minutes. We can also deliver other non-food um, items. So there, I think the people are getting uh, more and more used to order everything from Meitai. So we are very optimistic about the future of Meitai instant shopping. So in general, um, the trading will be the, uh, the key of our investment in 2021. And it will take a lot of investment. Uh, we uh, believe this business has tremendous um, uh, values. And we have, well, I would say, even stronger conviction now than one year ago. So, so um, let's make it very clear. We are going to keep investing into this. I believe um, may I say that that's the uh, community e-commerce is probably the best opportunity, uh, well, once five years or once every 10 years. So it's not common to get opportunity to build a new uh, infrastructure for, for e-commerce. If you look at the history of um, for e-commerce in China, like Taobao and, and, and JD, and we'll agree it will take a lot of investment to build a, a, a new infrastructure. But once you lay out the infrastructure, you will have access to a much bigger user base and, and the untapped markets. And with the new infrastructure, uh, we will have the opportunity to uh, rebuild the whole value chain. So it will take a huge, to create huge value not just business value, but also the value, uh, value for the whole society. So we are very committed to this. And other than retailing, uh, there are also some other initiatives that are also important to us. Because we uh, think of retailing as a more broader way, that's uh, uh, giving, meeting the needs of the, uh, the end consumers are providing either services or goods. So for us, uh, the right sharing and all the, the, the B2B uh, food distribution services are also new initiatives that we are going to keep investing in. And right sharing so uh, so much big operation, uh, operating loss in Q4, mainly due to the seasonality and, and because we proactively uh, launch new bikes, uh, electric mopeds, uh, since the beginning of the year, 
um, operational efficiency and turnover rates uh, were lower during the winter. Um, I think that's expected. And after the uh, intensive launch of new bikes and new uh, electric mopeds, and depreciation also significantly uh, increased in Q4. And ride sharing was on uh, the main, main er, major area of capex for us. And, and it, it, it's still a uh, loss making, but I think we are going to uh, keep building it given its long-term uh, strategic values. And other businesses such as Quadri, the B2B uh, food distribution business, also uh, expanded in both scale and scale of sales but also operating uh, losses in Q4. And quality not only achieved a um, good year-over-year growth on both G, uh, gross transaction volume and the number of active merchants in Q4. And we also continue to increase our market share. I think we are uh, closing the gap between quality and the number one player in the market. And at the same time, we, we were improving uh, unique economics. So I think uh, it's a, on a good uh, trend. In 2021, uh, we will likely um, increase, further increase investment in quality to explore uh, more potential in this uh, very important, but very fragmented market. Uh, we aim to find more opportunity to better help uh, more suppliers to digitize their operations and to better serve uh, more restaurant merchants. We already have uh, millions of uh, restaurants on our, uh, on our platform. We help them to um, attract uh, online traffic. We help them to, um, to get uh, online delivery uh, orders. We provide we are providing them with a better uh, cloud uh, SaaS solution, and we also want to um, do a full distribution for for them. So. I think that's an important part of our total solution for restaurants. And overall, we expect to um, further increase our investment into well, uh, certain new businesses in 2021. And that might need to uh, material negative impact on our overall profitability in the short term. So I think, I hope you are not surprised that we are going to keep investing in this. Because I, I believe we are looking at the very, very good opportunities. But in the past, uh, we have always uh, been accessing new business opportunities from a very long-term perspective. And invest based on our um, the long-term uh, uh, ROI assessment. So right now, I think uh, with Maytime Select, we are looking at a very good, very big opportunity. So. We will try our best to capture the opportunity, so we remain committed. At the same time, we are flexible in our investment base, and we will closely uh, monitor key metrics for each design and assess our progress uh, continuously. So that's um, that's um, my answer about loss making and, and, and new initiatives. And, and on your second question, um, so I think um, uh, we, we, are, we have more than 6 million merchants on our platform, and the vast majority of which uh, of whom are small, uh, medium uh, enterprises, SME. So I think um, we have been generating business for them, and also, um, okay, let me put it this way. So, we, we, we know well, while we want to provide value for them, for them but it's also a sensitive uh, topic for uh, us to monetize through our operation. So we have been very careful with this. Uh, in the past, we keep our uh, overall take rate um, at a reasonable level, and we avoided um, take margin. We, we, we didn't try to get a uh, monopoly position through um, big m and deals. So we got our position from uh, organic growth. And also, we are, um, right now, we are, for our uh, biggest uh, segment, that's uh, food delivery, we are going to uh, 
there are typically some um, modification to how we uh, charge the merchants because actually we are providing two parts, two, two kinds of services. One is the uh, transaction service on our platform, and the other is the actual physical on-demand delivery. So in the past, because we uh, plan these two services, so some people uh, misunderstand the over, overall uh, take rate. They think that, that take rate is high, it's uh, quite high compared to other e-commerce uh, pure marketplace like uh, Taobao. And that's an unfair uh, com comparison because we are providing not just a marketplace transaction uh, service, but also we are fulfilling the actual physical delivery. So, so we are going to uh, make these two parts uh, easier to understand. So I hope that people can, uh, both the merchants and uh, also the regulatory authority will understand the mechanism better. So I think that will um, create a, a better environment, environment, environment for us. And also, how we uh, expand our metal select business, we are uh, very closely uh, watching the UE, so we don't want to uh, step on any rules set, uh, set up by the government. So, for example, we are not uh, we, are all, we already have positive uh, gross margin for all the goods. So we are not earning money with a negative uh, gross margin. So the margin, the gross margin is positive. Uh, we are still making a loss that, uh, because of the <coughs> uh, infrastructure. So I think that's very We spend money to build the infrastructure. And that's one, one thing. We do spend money to buy uh, buy high and sell to cut up other SME. That's so uh, overall, I think that we want to. Uh, I think that we will, will embrace the. Uh, uh, we will play by the rules. Uh, we will do our best to be a good um, for a corporate citizen. So that's it. And thank you. Uh, uh, maybe I can uh, add, add a few uh, more points on, on your second question. Um, um, as she mentioned, we have 6.8 million active uh, merchants in 2020. Majority of those are very small merchants. Um, actually, they are very um, uh, small. We call macro uh, merchants. Those are the really the you know the the the. the the really a business contributors for, for local uh, economy and also the real business contributors to our platform. Um, so um, we have been, uh, uh, you know, value them and treat them as our business partners rather than, you know, the, 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 the merchant that helps uh, monetize our platform. Um, in our internal KPI for food delivery and for business, I think we, we always uh, prioritize the digitization you know, as our business volume is percentage of total business, the total industry is the you know, most important KPI rather than you know the monetization rate. Uh, if you look at the um, our monetization rate for food delivery in the past eight quarter, it has been actually uh, uh, relatively stable, actually a slightly decreased this quarter, and uh, we have been you know uh, grow our business um, by operating efficiency rather than increasing our submission rate. Uh, to merchants, actually, we hope we can gradually uh, reduce the, you know, the the the, the, uh, uh, the charge uh, 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 leverage by our oper uh, operating efficiency. That will continue to be the stra our strategy going forward. Also, for our in-store business, we have been, you know, um, provi provide more um, um, operating um, um, digitized, digitization tools to merchants uh, rather than commission-based uh, 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 um, um, charge. Um, commission-based um, uh, uh, transaction uh, product to, to the merchant. So I think um, we have been um, very cautious in, in this topic, and we, we will remain, remain um, you know, uh, stick to, to their, you know, our belief that uh, bigger scale means bigger responsibility uh, for, for companies like us. So thank you very much for your questions. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Alex Yao from JP Morgan. Please ask your question. 
Uh, thank you, Shingo, for the comprehensive discussion on your new initiative investment strategy. Uh, I have a couple of questions on May 20 uh in particular. Uh, so given the large investment in May 20 left in Q4 and also the uh, further investment going forward, can you please elaborate uh, a bit more around the progress for May 20 left so far and the strategy into 2021. Uh, how are you thinking about investment and the, how do you measure the ROI? Uh, lastly, what are the key metrics to um, access the success of this new business? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Alex. That's a lot of questions. So before getting into Meta Select, um, I want to further uh, what talk about how we are thinking about uh, retaining. So Meta is an 11-year-old company. So from the very beginning, we were building an economy platform to satisfy the daily needs of consumers. In the beginning, we are providing the, I would say that's the retaining of services. That's how we help the local uh, movie theaters, hotels, or, or, or health salons. Uh, I think that's, I consider that's the retaining of the services. And later we got into uh, Meta Food Delivery. Oh, that's a service, and that's a retaining of the food, because you actually buy the, good, uh, the food. So I, I would say um, we were in the retaining business from day one. Uh, we were expanding from the service uh, retaining of services to the retaining of goods. And for the retaining of goods, we started with a special category, and that's a, a restaurant food delivery. So I, I think that's a very special category for re retaining because it requires on-demand delivery. So that's the first the core category for us, and that's the foundation of our whole platform in the past. And so from that uh, foundation, we decided to explore uh, more categories, and we, which we want to explore um, both the category boundary and also the, the geographic boundaries. So we want to uh, provide more goods and services to our consumers going forward. Um, well, previously, our total adjusted market relating to uh, catering or food consumption ranges from about 4 trillion to 10 trillion IMD in China. But for the broader uh, consumer retailing market in China, the, it, it's around uh, 40, 40 trillion, with low, still quite low online penetration. I think that's the market that we are. Uh, going to get into. So specifically, I think uh, May Time Select is a very big opportunity for us. And it's a new efficient way to, um, to get access to uh, several hundred million, hundreds of millions of new users. So we are committed to become a leading player in this uh, community e-commerce business. Because community e-commerce, uh, business requires a new logistic infrastructure. With this new in infrastructure, it will uh, have the access to uh, the last, I would, I would say the last uh, three or four hundred million uh, internet users, e-commerce users. So Maytime Select has the potential to um, efficiently penetrate into the uh, the very, very lower tier cities. Here we are not talking about tier two or tier three cities. We are talking about uh, towns or even villages in some places, including all the rural areas. In the past, the, 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 the e-commerce, uh, most mo different models of e-commerce and existing infrastructure and were not able to serve the needs of those rural areas until we have uh, the community e-commerce. So this new model will um, effectively acquire uh, more users on, our, on onto our platform and lower the cost across the value chain 
and expand our business to broader um, retailing of goods. So in future, uh, we will expand the current uh, online retailing from mainly uh, fresh produce and daily necessities to include the more uh, FMCGs and other products. So we hope that um, the rural areas and other markets will have better access to such services uh, and goods through our platform. And I think it's fully aligned with our mission to help people eat better and get better. So um, well, I think it's very, this opportunity is very exciting, but it's also very costly. It has only been a few months since we launched um, Meta Select. It was launched uh, in July last year, so Q4 was the second quarter. And the whole market is still in a very early stage, and it's moving very fast, and, and it's growing very fast. Uh, I would say we have achieved um, good progress in some aspects. For example, in the beginning, geographic coverage was a priority when we started. In Q4, we successfully expanded the Trans Select to cover 27 provinces and more than 2,000 cities and counties, so covering more than 90% of the cities and counties nationwide. And both the number of orders and, and transacting users grew rapidly in Q4 as a result. And our daily average, uh, every daily items sold exceeded 20 million in the second half of December and reached a peak of um, close to uh, 30 million pieces. In addition to the uh, geographic coverage, um, we invested in, uh, in building our infrastructure on warehousing and procurement as another focus. So we saw a very strong momentum in our business with the monthly sales growing by around well, more than 100% uh, in December compared to November. Because the whole market is just exploding, and more uh, group leaders choose to work with us because we can provide a uh, good experience on uh, the goods and also the procurement. In turn, um, attracting an ever larger groups of consumers into uh, our platform. So this new business especially help us attract consumers in lower tier cities and also the older generation of internet users. So we expect to further grow our transacting user base in the next few quarters. So right now we have around a little more than 500 million, and I, I think there are uh, three to 400 million users to acquire in the next uh, few quarters. So we have observed many new consumer from it and select. And they are continuing to spend more time on our platform and ordering more frequently and ordering, uh, ordering higher ticket size for each purchase. As they grow uh, more and more trust and confidence in our services. So momentum can just continue to be healthy during the first, first quarter this year. And we will continue to expand Uh, operation over the next few quarters. Uh, we will always make uh, investment from a very long-term perspective rather than paying uh, too much attention to uh, short-term uh, metrics. So, I, I just mentioned, we will continue to invest into building our uh, warehousing and procurement uh, infrastructure. And uh, we will also invest in, uh, into logistic technologies system. This will form the foundation for us to uh, operate more efficiently and deliver consistent user experience in the long term, uh, which we believe will be our competitive advantage. Because that's a very high frequency category. You can um, uh, spend money to acquire user, but it's going them, you will lose them. So we will need to build uh, the infrastructure. We will need to invest in the infrastructure. We need to uh, with our capability to make sure they are happy with us, and then they will come back. 
and also to make uh, our consumers happy uh, for the supply, supply chain, we focus on building and maintaining good relationship with key suppliers and, and gradually increasing the efficiency of um, sourcing. So here I will admit because we were not in a, a very big player in the general e-commerce, so that uh, supply chain is, is something we need to um, catch up with other players. Um, we'll also continue to um, refine our product offerings and to optimize the SKU selections based on well, the ever-changing consumer demand and also the seasonality. But because this is our first year in this business, we are not so sure about the seasonality yet. So we will try our best. And also our ability to select uh, magazine products will improve over the, uh, over the next few uh, quarters. Overall, we believe it's very important to build a comprehensive capability for community e-commerce. You need to be able to acquire users. You need to be able to deliver um, what timely. You need to be able to source the uh, best uh, supplies and the best uh, money for value. So it, it, it's, uh, it, will, it will take a very comprehensive capability to uh, win this market. So it's crucial for us to further build our warehousing, consumer infrastructure, and enhance our supply chain capability, and also optimize the online operation. So leveraging our um, already quite strong offline operation capability, we believe we will have um, well, better and better operational efficiency with leading uh, skills in the long term. Uh, at this moment, I think uh, the improvement on some metrics such as revenue per item, uh, sales volume per day, retention rate, and consumer purchase frequency well, mm, will uh, testify the, the value of our investment. Uh, finally, uh, I would like to stress again that um, we always try, try to strengthen our relationship with different business partners across the uh, e-commerce, community e-commerce value chain, including those millions of uh, group leaders, most of which are essentially uh, 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 SME, the local um, mom and pop shops. And we also care a lot about our uh, yeah, warehousing of human suppliers and also the, the upstream uh, product suppliers and farmers. We want to make sure that this business creates a win-win opportunity for all the participants in the ecosystem in the long term. And we will continue to prioritize our resources and invest uh, very actively in Metan Select. And also, more importantly, uh, on social responsibility, we want to help build um, the logistic infrastructure and digitize the purchase and distribution process to deliver a higher quality goods to uh, people in lower tier cities and also the rural areas at a more affordable prices. So we believe that it will bring us uh, long term rewards and also create a lot more value for the society at large. So yeah, I, I want to stress again, um, we have, this opportunity is very exciting, but it's also very costly. So. I think we are going to do our best to want to capture this um, um, opportunity and to build the, uh, a very good business for, well, I think for everyone. But we, we need to be patient. Be patient. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Thomas Chong from Jeffries. Please ask your question. Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, thanks, management, uh, for taking my questions. Uh, I understand that uh, the new users uh, for Meituan Sirat mainly coming from the lower tier cities and may not necessarily uh, require food delivery for using uh, our other existing services. 
So uh, what's our thoughts around the synergies between Meituan Select uh, and the whole platform? Uh, in the future, uh, should we uh, expect Meituan Select as uh, more of an independent, profitable business, or the one that brings you traffic and strategic value? Uh, where do you see the UE uh, improvement uh, coming from? Um, and also, do we have a timetable on a break even? Uh, with the tremendous uh, resources uh, allocated to Meituan Select, uh, would you limit the investment into other new initiatives? Uh, how should we think about uh, your overall profitability in the next uh, one to two years? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tom, for your question. Um, well, I think uh, there are uh, potentially um, uh, many uh, different aspects of synergy um, uh, through the community e-commerce. I think the, the first and most important is it help us effectively penetrate into lower densities and acquire, you know, um, a massive uh, number of new consumers who were not always existing users. Um, we believe in the long run, um, they have the potential to use other services on our platform. Um, besides the, you know, the physical good e-commerce that uh, we, we will be providing to them. Um, and this will, you know, um, um, significantly strengthen the, the, the power of our platform. Um, I think um, food delivery uh, still could have potential to, you know, further penetrate into lower densities, uh, but uh, I think require, uh, you know, better offering, um, better infrastructure. And besides food delivery, I think cross-selling opportunity are still massive with our other businesses, such as in-store services, hotel booking, broader retail, or ride sharing business. It may take time for, you know, uh, each consumer to, uh, you know, really, um, um, often using uh, different categories, but we have seen very, um, you know, um, very clear cohort in our uh, last um, uh, 10 years um, uh, consumer behavior. So the longer they stay with us, the more category they will be purchasing. Um, this is in line with our foot platform strategy. Um, the community commerce model right now is still at very early stage, um, and we expect it to um, evolve quickly. So um, the model right now we're seeing may not be the you know the final business model that um, it, it uh, evolved to be. Um, but uh, no matter you know what, what exactly this model um, we or the industry may take, we are very confident this will be a standalone profitable business after reaching a certain scale and uh, improving the efficiency in the whole value chain. Um, the <laughs> will be improved um, uh, through um, uh, several areas. Uh, first, the uh, um, price and revenue per item uh, were extremely low right now. Um, we have seen um, uh, it uh, steadily increase during Q4 and uh, uh, Q1 so far, and we expect it to continue increasing in the, in the next several years as we normalize the item price and optimize our product needs. We will also expand the product offerings from fresh um, foods to including a wider range of other packaged foods and other non items with higher prices and margins. This will be one of the key drivers to improve UE in the uh, near term. On the cost of goods side, we are increasingly sourcing um, from farmers and other upstream goods suppliers, which help um, um, cut the intermediate service cost in the supply chain. Um, Second, we think there is flexibility on commission rates offered to good leaders as we increase business scale and improve operation efficiency for good leaders. Um, this, uh, we also think um, the warehousing of fulfillment costs per item has room to go down from economy scale and uh, uh, operating efficiency. Um, as we increase our GMV and revenue, we would like to achieve better efficiency uh, with the economic scale. And the third, um, our business development and the marketing are the headquarter uh, expenses for items uh, also have a uh, big room to go down quickly due to operating leverage. Uh, however, to your question, there is no um, timetable as to when exactly this will break even. Um, as we mentioned, we think this is an important new infrastructure to digitize the you know, the local retailing, particularly in lower tier cities, and the short term profitability is uh, not a, you know, a, a, a top objective for us right now. Um, 
uh, we with the large investment into the retail business, um, including the Meta Flex, um, we expect to materially step up our investment into uh, our new, bi new business and, and <laughs> new initiative in 2021. Um, and this may uh, bring short-term volatility uh, on our overall profitability. Um, we will carefully monitor this new opportunity and uh, 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 careful um, allocate our resources um, and we will keep you up there. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Ronald Kong from Goldman Sachs. Please ask your question. Thank you. Thank you, Shinka, Xiaohui, and Scarlett, and team. Uh, this quote I want to ask on in-store, and this is a, a very profitable business for us. And we see kind of margins fell uh, sequentially um, and talked about some investments into uh, coupons, into advert advertising. Just want to know how, how do we think about this in-store, very profitable segment for us for 2021, and in particular as we see some newer entrants, including potential competition from uh, short form video players with, with Douyin uh, offering uh, more local services and entry points there. How do we see this uh, competition and, uh, and the implication to our, our targets for, for 2021 and our profitability for this segment? Thank you. Yes, uh, Roland, um, the short answer for you um, is um, uh, we, are, we are very um, uh, uh, positive for um, our install business in both 2021 and in the long term. Uh, as you, you have been uh, monitoring, uh, the operating profit for our second segment you know, uh, continue to achieve steady uh, growth. Um, and also the operating margin has been you know, um, uh, relatively stable and slightly increased, uh, mainly due to improving um, efficiency and increasing uh, scale. Um, I think this is uh, a result of um, uh, you know, a broader trend of you know, the local merchants are embracing online platforms um, and embracing the digitalization. Um, we have seen revenue contributions from higher margin in finance and other lifestyle business also increase year over year. Um, uh, we, uh, as the, the trend uh, of the install business in, in the past uh, few quarters that we expect to continue to um, improve. Um, then there are some um, you know, um, a, a, a slightly uh, uh, change in the uh, in the overall second margin, uh, mainly due to the, um, our investment into hotel and travel space and also due to the, you know, the mix change as hotel and travel um, you know, contribute a large share of install revenue. Um, and uh, we think um, the, the, uh, under the uh, COVID-19, uh, we focused on you know, the more revenue from transaction-based products to provide deeper value to both consumer and merchants. Um, so um, you know, um, in any term, advertising revenue as a percentage of the revenue uh, decreased. Uh, you know, these transaction uh, volume growth provide a stronger uh, base for you know, our, our future uh, uh, you know, merchant um, activities and the future revenue growth. Um, we also um, continue to um, you know, uh, spend our uh, marketing and uh, sales uh, to uh, develop some new service categories uh, with high potential um, um, as we think that uh, you know, the, a, a new generation, they are, uh, they actually are embracing more and more new uh, you know, local um, lifestyle services. And some of these categories are growing very fast and will also be, you know, our future growth driver. So um, for margin profile, um, in, in summary, we do not expect, uh, you know, um, um, you see that Q3 um, in 2020 has achieved very high margin. Um, we, we, we think that uh, uh, we, we probably will see the margin um, uh, slightly decrease um, due to the revenue mix change. Uh, but overall, um, we think the, the, you know, the uh, profitability for this segment in 2021 and the going forward should be relative um, stable. We will also further you know, uh, uh, diversify and grow our transition-based product for uh, local services and provide more value to consumers, which we are hopefully increasing more uh, engagement with uh, our consumers. And in the long run, there's uh, uh, more flexibility 
uh, on my transition uh, for install services um, as we improve our you know, multiple transaction-based product capabilities and provide more advertising solutions for different types of merchants across different categories. Um, for your questions on the potential competition from you know, other traffic platforms such as short, short form video platform, um, um, I, I actually I think overall this, um, this is uh, uh, within our expectation um, because as I mentioned, this is under a, a more broad trend that the, the local merchants they are embracing um, on, you know, online platforms and in, it, it's, it's natural that they go to you know, try different uh, platforms and uh, they all will be you know, spending in, in different uh, uh, traffic platforms. Actually, we view this as a positive, positive um, uh, sign for the industry overall. Uh, this means that uh, you know, um, this digitization is a trend and that all these local merchants uh, will embrace and this will actually help uh, educate these local merchants to help them more sophisticated in use online platforms and can understand more uh, value um, provided by, uh, you know, um, integrate um, 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 uh, solution provider like us. Uh, because um, we as um, a digital partner, uh, compared to the purely traffic platform, I think we are a more integrated, um, uh, you know, uh, service provider for this uh, uh, local uh, merchants. We are also very confident you know, about our strong brand awareness. My share of consumers is the go-to platform for install services, um, providing a large number of consumers with a wide range of high-quality services and massive selections and more affordable prices will continue to be our focus and we will continuously enhance our location-based recommendation algorithm, diversify our products and service offerings and provide users data use experience. Uh, for our merchants, um, we will continue to create more tailored and integrated products to help them. Um, as we deepen our relations with these high quality and local train merchants and city level, uh, while penetrating deeper into more lower DSP markets, we will continue to maintain our you know, advantage on the supply side. So our unique and, and comprehensive um, content ecosystem also enable us not only to help merchants make their decisions, but also you know, to create a deeply engaged experience for uh, our merchants. And going forward, we will definitely try new forms to further enhance our content ecosystem. Um, and also, we, we believe we are planning to benefit from this, uh, this uh, trend of online um, you know, penetration uh, and, and to uh, continue to benefit from this very you know, big uh, market with huge potential. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next question comes from the line of Ya Zhang of Cetix. Please ask your question. Thank you. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Just a few questions regarding our food delivery business. It uh, looks like growth of food delivery business is significantly ahead of our competitor. Um, did we further increase our market share? And given the current development, what's our expectations on all the growth, subsidy ratio, and improvement in 2021? And then finally, um, there is a lot of folks on the anti minority uh, regulation development. Would this impact our competitive advantage in the future? Uh, thanks. That's my question. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, uh, yes, for uh, during Q4 and actually during the whole year of 2020, we further solidify our leading position in food delivery. Um, we have achieved a healthy order volume growth uh, with accelerating revenue growth um, on the back of higher marketing efficiency and wider and better food delivery supplies on our platform. Um, user metrics um, have been also performing very well. Uh, monthly transaction users reached the new height and the monthly average transaction frequency of our monthly transaction users also um, exceeded a record of more than six orders in Q4. Um, as you uh, mentioned, we have been very carefully um, you know, study the anti-monopoly uh, regulation and uh, strictly follow uh, you know, the rules by the regulators. Um, we believe, you know, um, we can maintain our competitive advantages of the business despite the new regulation environment. 
um, especially on the merchant side. Um, we respect our merchants' independent choices and aim to create more values for them. Um, we have strong advantage in terms of scale and quality of user base in most cities and counties. We bring more traffic and growth opportunity to our merchants. Um, we, we have by far the largest delivery network and a very efficient operation, guaranteeing optimal delivery service quality for our merchants. You know, basically, we, we charge lower, but we can deliver faster and uh, in a more stab uh, uh, stable um, uh, uh, time. Also, our deep industry insights also allow us to provide merchants with extended products and customer solutions. We have also the you know, more integrated uh, services um, besides the food delivery for, for, for restaurants. Um, our on the ground business development team across the country has also you know, been uh, proven to be you know, a, a unique advantage uh, in terms of you know, really understanding the merchant's needs and provide uh, you know, comprehensive guidance and services to them. So uh, in summary, we win our merchants with our you know, service quality um, and uh, we think this is um, you know, a very um, healthy strategy for us. We will comply with the regulations and continuously refine our operation. Our uh, uh, long-term uh, uh, prospects of food delivery business remain unchanged. Um, food delivery uh, penetration uh, remains low with only around 2.5% of the urban meal consumption. Um, and we, we have um, talked many times that the digitization both on the supply side and demand side have been very clear. Um, uh, so we remain optimistic on our other growth potential. Um, our you know, target in the mid to long term remains unchanged. We believe the investment you know, in new initiatives such as Nature's Lake um, and other um, uh, retail business will also you know, help us acquire more transacting users. Um, many of them have potential to convert uh, to our food delivery business. And uh, similarly, our uh, mid to long term uh, confidence for the unit economic remains unchanged. Um, uh, our, actually, our performance in the past year, several years, and past several quarters have, I, I think, proved what we have been communicating through you know, the, the capital markets, through our, uh, to our uh, shareholders and investors. Um, and these um, you know, um, unit number improve have been seen to be driven you know, by uh, the efficiency in a scale and by the you know, effective marketing tools by the reduced and subsidy ratio, and also by the uh, a wide, a wider range of offerings for um, you know for both the consumers and also um, you know a new you know continuing introduction of new uh, advertising and marketing tools to our merchants. And in the end, this is a economy of scale business, so we think um, uh, we will be uh, uh, more more efficient uh, with our scale growth. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Kenneth Fong from Credit Suisse. Please ask your question. Hi, good evening, management, and uh, thank you for taking my question. I have a quick one on the bike sharing business. Uh, you mentioned that you will continue to launch more pi uh, bike and then e bike. Uh, so. I want to see how, is, how do you think about the competitive landscape of the ride-sharing business will be like eventually, and would e-bike be uh, able to achieve a much better unit economics compared to the bike that you previously mentioned? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, uh, yes, uh, operating laws expanded in Q4 for ride-sharing services, um, uh, mainly due to um, um, three reasons. Uh, first, um, as, as we mentioned, you know, lower turnover rates uh, result from extreme weather conditions in winter. Um, uh, ride sharing business um, uh, has proven to be uh, quite seasonal. Um, the second, uh, as you mentioned, that we, we launched um, millions of uh, uh, mopeds in 2020 and uh, making our assessment of different operation plans for Q4. Uh, within the aggressive operation of such a large number of mopeds in this winter under extreme weather conditions, 
uh, will not be very efficient. So we actually proactively control some efficient, inefficient operation activities in this period. Uh, even if we further lower the revenue for this business and uh, could um, you know, bring um, a bigger loss. Um, and third, we continue to reassess and optimize our strategy for the operating expansion in Q4 and delay the launch of some of the new markets in certain cities. Um, we have um, continued to you know, uh, monitor and learn along the way for this uh, actual business. Um, and we continue to be very determined to put substantial resources and efforts to growing this business. We believe both the uh, you know, bikes and electronic market services are mass market, high frequency, and satisfy the short to mid-term uh, mid travels for the you know, very extensive Chinese consumer factors. Um, we have also seen other you know, players also step up investment into this ride-sharing market. Um, we remain um, you know, highly uh, confident about the, you know, the profitability and the economic potential of this business. Um, we also um, have been you know, learned um, you know, about the, you know, how to um, a plan for you know, future um, uh, uh, bike launching uh, and e-bike launching uh, uh, plans. We believe we will continue to provide you know, optimal short distance travel experience to our consumers and uh, uh, will continue to be a leading player in this uh, field. In 2021, we expect our turnover rate to improve and to continue to operate more actively in this market. Um, again, electronic market uh, is um, uh, better, has managed to be, have uh, better unit numbers than bikes. Um, and it has also been proven in the last uh, several quarters. And they generally offer better user experience than traditional bikes, and uh, many consumers are willing to pay premiums to use uh, mopeds, resulting in higher price per ride. In the long run, we think the moped uh, should generate sufficient cash flow to cover costs and all the maintenance expenses uh, during its lifespan. It should be a profitable business on a standalone basis. Um, our view on the clear path to profitability has not changed. Uh, while currently we do not focus on short-term profitability and we are allocating more resources from a, a long-term perspective, we will continue to focus on both user experience and operating efficiency improvement in the next uh, few quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Very clear. Thanks. We will take the final question from Alicia Yap of Citigroup. Please ask your question. Hi, um, thank you. Good evening, management. Um, thanks for taking my questions. Uh, congrats on the solid um, closing of 2020. Uh, it seems like we uh, recently made some investment in the technology space. So just curious, um, what is your strategy and um, overall um, you know, overall plans on this investment? Uh, which verticals uh, will be our focus going forward? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alicia. Uh, that's a more interesting question. So uh, I've always considered uh, Maiden to be a technology company. Uh, we are not a pure technology company, and we are more like a tech-enabled business. Because I think uh, no matter how exciting the tech technology is, it is still the means, not the end itself. The end for us is our mission to help people eat better and live better. That's the end. But how? We have to uh, use technology. Well, that's how we think about technology. So in the beginning, I think uh, we started as a, well, when we talk about technology, we can talk about it in a narrower sense or in a broader sense. So let's start with a narrower sense. So we started as a mobile internet company. Without a smartphone, without a mobile internet, there would be no business for us. There would be no Oh, yeah, there will be no made one. But if you look broader, um, the mobile internet is a part of the internet. And internet is part of uh, or information, even broader information technology, the IT. And information technology is a very big topic. 
I just build a part of even broader technology, which including other technology like biotech, not just infotech. So we started with um, mobile internet. So we have one of the largest uh, uh, software engineering team in China. We employ uh, more than uh, 10,000 engineers. At the same time, well, we started with an app, and then we built our um, well, quite complicated, um, very large scale uh, auto dispatching and routing system. That's the foundation of our on-demand um, delivery business. So that's the software part. But another very important part is hardware, because maybe it's in the business of moving atoms, not just moving bits. So we need to be good at not just software, but also hardware. So that's why we have been uh, uh, doing a um, development uh, with uh, autonomous delivery for a for quite a long time. So, for example, uh, during the uh, pandemic, we pilot tested uh, our uh, autonomous delivery in uh, Sunyi uh, district in Beijing, and we have successfully completed more than uh, 15,000 orders. And that's the autonomous vehicle, autonomous delivery on service. Also, at the same time, uh, we pilot tested our uh, mid and air delivery in Shenzhen. Uh, we have a zone. Uh, actually, last December, I tried that. Uh, so I, I, I drink a, a cup of milk tea delivered by Mekan and uh, Jones in Shenzhen. So that's the hard hardware part. So when you ask me, uh, we made some investment in the technology space. I assume you are talking about in uh, our outside minority investment. It's just a part of our investment. Our main investment into our own, uh, own operation if we talk about outside investment, uh, yes, uh, in the past year, especially in the past uh, second half of 2020, we uh, invested in some startups. For example, that could do uh, robotics. That they, they build uh, robots for a restaurant. And also, we uh, invest in portion robotics. And they build uh, robots for a uh, to clean to, to the, 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 the lobby and the uh, office floors. And also we invest in high robotics. They build uh, robots for uh, warehouses. And also we invest in flexible robotics and they build very advanced adaptive um, robots. And also we, we invested a lot into the auto, which is building uh, our next generation uh, electrical vehicles. So you can probably notice that all these companies have the same word in their names, that's robotics. So I, uh, I think important, hardware is a very important part for us, especially those smart hardware. I think for us, that's uh, robotics. So I'm a big believer of uh, robots as a service business because well, with better and better technology, um, with um, well, advanced robotics, that's huge potential to um, improve the efficiency and lower the cost and create uh, the better experience for our uh, customers. And also, because we already have, have a big, very big operation, so we uh, have an understanding of the needs of the end customers. So I think we are in a, in a position to leverage the, well, the, the cutting edge technology to build a um, and more efficient and better business. So that's robotics. That's uh, I think that's the, um, the the key vertical for us right now. Also, uh, hardware or robotic is still considered part of information technology because uh, the mission of Meta is help people eat better. So we are not limiting uh, limiting ourselves to just uh, information technology. We are also actively looking into uh, other technology, in, including biotech. For example, we believe uh, synthetic biology will play a more and more important role in in, in, in food and in, in, in everything. And also, we are looking into every tech. So I think we are going to uh, use to pay attention to all those uh, cutting edge uh, front of frontier technology. 
uh, we'll invest it in some and uh, we will build uh, some by ourselves. But all these technology are just a means to um, for the for the ends as the mission to help people uh, eat better. So uh, that's my answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the interesting answer. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I would now like to hand the conference back to Scarlett for any closing remarks. Okay. Thank you for joining our call. We look forward to speaking with everyone next quarter. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. This concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.